Hey guys, hope you're well. Rob here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove the internal battery from the Levo SL. Now, why would you take out the internal battery? There's a couple of reasons. Firstly, if you wanted to travel abroad and take your bike on a plane, um, you can't take an e-bike on a plane because of battery limitations. But if you take the battery out, you can actually travel with some of these range extenders. They're 160 what hours and um, a lot of airlines allow you to travel with one, some of them two in hand luggage because it falls under the maximum capacity that you're allowed to travel with, which is pretty cool. And secondly, you can actually drop a little bit of weight from the bike if you want to. You can take out the internal battery, which weighs around 1.8 kilos and just ride with these range extenders that weigh one kilo. So you lose 800 grams. You also change the distribution of the weight slightly the battery, internal battery, runs up to around here. Um, if you take that out, you've just got the weight distributed pretty much uh, in the center. So you've got a more centered weight on your bike. Um, just feels slightly different. This is only a 160 watt hour, but the Levo SL motor is so efficient. You can get like 15 or 20 miles just from one of these. And if you had multiples of these, you could uh, you know, have one here, one in the car, and if you're doing loops, drop this one off when it's uh, used or, or have one in a backpack if, if that's your type of thing you wanna do. Now I've been riding with just this uh, on a few rides and works really well. The bike performs just as you would expect with the internal battery, albeit that you've got a much lower capacity. So there you go, a couple of reasons why you might wanna take out the internal battery and just use a range extender. It is pretty straightforward. Now it's not really designed for the end user to remove, but it's, it's not hard to be totally honest with you. All you need is some basic tools. You need some Allen keys, some torque keys, a torque wrench, a little bit of medium strength thread lock. I'll link all the stuff you need in the description, but it's fairly basic bike tools. A couple of things to note. What we need to do is we need to take the crank arms off. These are tight, man. They're like done up by King Kong in the factory. They're so tight. So you might need to uh, get a longer bar, break a bar, just to loosen this bolt in here because it is really tight. I've pre-loosened it already. So just something to note before you put it in the stand, you might just want to undo the lock ring on here in order to loosen this nut, do it when it's on the floor, just because uh, it's a bit safer than doing a stand. But essentially all we really need to do is there's two bolts on this side, a couple of bolts on the other side, um, and that allows us to drop the motor and tilt the motor backwards and just get the battery out. The battery just has a couple of screws um, on the underside holding it, holding it in. It's, it's really straightforward. So let's get cracking. When you remove the back wheel, it just uh, means that you can drop the motor and tilt the motor quite far back to actually get the battery out. We've got access to a couple of bolts just under here. And we're gonna remove the crank arm. There is a lock ring on it. It's got a left-hand thread. So to loosen it, it's the opposite way to what you'd normally do. So you actually just turn this clockwise to loosen it off instead of anti-clockwise. And don't need to take that all the way out. That is um, just gonna help us extract the crank. So you loosen it off. And then when you loosen the main bolt inside, the bolt pushes against the crank and just prizes it off. Like I said, I've pre-loosened this already because they are like super tight. There we go. And when we're turning that around, what that's doing is it's um, pulling the crank off. There we go. You could also take the crank arm off the other side. You don't really need to. Now the next thing we need to do is remove the chain ring. It's got a little uh, retaining um, kind of clip on it. So we'll take that off. And then there's a single Allen bolt that we just need to undo. It just locks it on. So I've got this little pick to take off the um, lock ring. Okay. It's just this little thing here. It's just a retaining ring and it just stops the chain ring moving. Pop all your little bolts and stuff in some kind of little tray. Next I'm gonna take the chain guide off. And for that, we need a T25. Take the chain off. I'm gonna take the chain ring off as well. Just need a three mil Allen key. And this should just slide off gently. There we go. What we've got here 
There's a couple of Torx bolts here. And we've got one more bolt just under here as well that we access from the other side. And we've got another um, three bolts on the other side as well. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the bash guard under here. Just obviously make a note of remember which bolt goes where. Final bolt holding in the under tray is a T20. This is a longer one, this one. And it just actually kind of holds on the bottom of the tray, I'll show you. Just this here. It's just kind of securing that on. So there you go, that's the um, bash guard removed. So now what we've got is we've got one, two bolts, and then a third one at the back that we'll access from the other side. And what I'm gonna do now is just loosen these with a T30. I'm not gonna take it out completely because I'm gonna loosen the other side as well. It's exactly the same, same location. So I'm actually gonna take out the bolt completely because it lets me access and push through an Allen key through the bolt hole and just loosen off the one on this side and then I'm gonna put this back in because we don't remove the rear ones. We only remove the ones on the front. There we go, so that's loose. And then what I'm gonna do is just pop this bolt back in. And we just need to do it like tight enough, not too, not completely tight. And we just need to nip it up and then just back off a couple of turns just so it's loose and it allows us to effectively drop the motor and these two bolts here are the ones that are holding it in and it just kind of swings down. You'll see it become obvious in a minute. Now, what we'll do, take these bolts out completely. So just remember you've got the longer bolt at the front. Slightly shorter one at the back. These are all with a T30. They do have these fairly big washers on them. Just be sure that obviously you don't lose those. Okay, so now what we can do is we can actually just drop the motor down. Um, there's two cables. One is um, a uh, speed sensor cable and one uh, goes to the TCU. So I'm just gonna unplug the fatter one. That's the one that goes up through the bike and you can see that the motor just swings all the way back and the battery is just in here and there's one more bolt holding it in so I'm just going to take that one out. It's a T20 just with my hand at the bottom just so the battery doesn't fly out. It won't fly out, it's, it's quite snug in there. And then here we go. I'm just gonna ease the battery down slightly. This here, this is a screwed connector for the battery. So I'm just gonna unscrew it and then pull it out and the battery will just drop out. There it is, 320 watt internal battery. So you can see we've undone these screws here. One was up here and one was down here on the bash plate. And that's a 320 watt hour battery, weighs 1.8 kilos. And we're gonna just use this one. Um, and this is one kilo. So you're saving a little bit of weight for the weight weenies out there. Now, a couple of important things. Without the battery in, the cables will slap and they will make some noise in the frame. So best thing to do is to get a bit of bubble wrap and you're just gonna basically pop it up the tube and that just will stop the uh, cables rattling around in there. Um, it acts as like a mock battery. It's not the most elegant solution, but it works really well. Um, and then also really important is um, this here, this connector here, we want to seal up. So I wrapped electrical tape around it, um, a little bit of bubble wrap around it as well. Wrap it up. 
can tape it and then I'm just going to pop it back up there with my bubble wrap and then that is pretty well sealed so you shouldn't have too many issues with that moving around or getting water in it. Next thing to do is just to put it all back together. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, a couple of things to note, you're going to want some thread lock on these. Um, once you've torqued them down, it will just lock them in and it will stop them vibrating loose. So medium strength thread lock is what Specialized recommend for that. Just gently make sure that none of these cables are pinched. Because if you're not careful, they can just pinch on these bolt housings just here. So just ease it in. Um, it's quite a snug fit. Put a bit of thread lock on these. Just a little dab, a bit of thread lock on here. And um, when these bolts go back in, what I would recommend that you do is just so the motor's in the perfect position, is not put them fully home and tighten them all the way. Just loosely put the bolts back in. And then when you're sure the motor is exactly where it should be in terms of its location, you're just making sure you're not putting it in at a slightly incorrect angle. Um, don't do these bolts up, just, just nip them up ever so slightly and we're going to torque them up with a torque wrench just to their correct specs. And then remember we loosen this bolt through here, so I'm going to take out the rear one again. Slide my Allen key through and just nip this one back up and pop this guy in, bit of thread lock. Now what we'll do is we'll torque these bolts up. We're screwing into carbon here, torque wrench, super important. Uh, it needs to be 17 Newton meters on this side, 10 on the other. All the torques values are in the user manual. You adjust it down to 10. There we go. And the one on the back. That's it. So torqued up, thread locked. Um, so all we got to do now is pop the chain ring back on, pop a little bit of grease, a, a light amount of grease, just around this um, chain ring, the teeth on the chain ring. Don't need a huge amount. Pop this back on. And then the retaining clip. Um, I found the easiest thing to do with these is just to open it slightly. You don't want to damage it. So just open it slightly. There we go. Just make sure it's fully home. Okay, and we'll just nip this up. It needs to be uh, five newton meters. So I'll talk that up in a moment. So we'll just pop the battery cover back on. And remember this long bolt just pops through here. I find it just easier just to line it up with this one. Make sure he's in. Pop the chain guide back on. It's just got a locating pin on there that goes into the carbon frame. One thing to note, there is um, one bolt that you're not going to be able to put back in because it actually goes into the battery. It secures into the battery. So to make sure you don't lose it, I'll just pop it in the battery. Torque it up. Then we pop the crank back on. I always pop a bit of grease just in here. You could give this a nice clean if you wanted to. I've got loads of dust on there, but um, I'll give it a clean out when I put the battery back in. Bit of grease just in here. Just gonna loosen off this lock ring a little bit. And then I'm gonna pop the crank arm back on. All right, crank arm on. Last thing we got to do is just pop the rear wheel on. And then we have a Levo SL with no internal battery. We'll pop the range extender on and um, just make sure everything's working well. It will be. This is the fourth time I've done this. There we go. Okay. So we've just got to make sure we're torquing up all these bolts correctly to the required torque. That's it. We're just going to use the range extender. Pop the range extender in. Turn the bike on. Now on the display, 
There's just five green lights on here. The blue lights have disappeared because we don't have the internal battery. The bike, the TCU recognizes we've got the range extender. So now we've got a Levo SL, no internal battery. It's all structurally sound. You don't need that internal battery for any kind of frame integrity. The only difference is the weight's now here instead of all the way up here. We've lost 800 grams. We can take this battery off completely and just have a regular bike with a motor with no power to it. There's barely any resistance. There's only 2.8 watts of resistance through this motor. You can take this off, put it on a plane, put these in your hand luggage. Loads of options there. Really, really simple to do. Takes about 20 minutes once you've done it. You just need those key tools and you know make sure your torques and everything correctly. Work in a decent environment and um, it is pretty safe. Make sure with anything electrical, you're turning it off when you're messing around with things. And that's it, I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments. If you've got any questions, give us a thumbs up if this is useful and subscribe for weekly e-bike content and I'll catch up with you soon.